Welcome to our Union Hall. And I got a couple of statements that I want to read. One in particular, the first one is from John Samuelson, our international president, who couldn't be here in the way on business. But he asked me to read the statement. As international president of the Transport Workers Union of America, AFL CIO, it is my pleasure to extend the best wishes of every TWU member and officer across this country to TWU Local 100 President Tony Utano. That's me, by the way. <laughs> and the entire Local 100 leadership as we launch a new contract campaign with the MTA. I pledge the unqualified support and substantial resources of the International Union to win this fight, including financial, political, legal, research, communications, and more. That's good. That's right. <laughs> I stand shoulder-to-shoulder shoulder with Local 100 leadership and I have communicated to them that I will fully support any and all decisions they feel are necessary to attain a negotiated agreement. <clears throat> no stone will be left unturned to ensure that we deliver a fair and equitable contract to Local 100 membership. Our success in this campaign is paramount not only to transit workers in New York, but to workers in public transportation throughout America. Together, the TW Nas International and TW Local 100 will prevail, and we will score a win for Local 100 members and their families. And that's from John Samuelson. Welcome to the Transport Workers Hall. Thank you for agreeing to meet with us here at our union's headquarters, the house that Mike Quill built. As we officially open contract negotiations for the 40,000 Local 100 members at MTA New York City Transit, MTA Mapstower, and the MTA Bus Company. Seated alongside me are the top elected officers of our union, including myself as president. First we have Secretary Treasurer Earl Phillips. Hello. Reporting Secretary Latanya Crisp, <laughs> Administrative Vice President Nelson Rivera, <laughs> now our Vice Presidents, Richard Davis Mapstoa, <laughs> JP Patapio, GA <laughs> Service, Pete Rasconi, MTA Bus, <laughs> Shirley Martin, CD. Eric Logal, RTO. <laughs> Linwood Wichard Stations. <laughs> and John Chirillo, Maintenance Away. <laughs> also with us, we have our brothers from Amalgamated Transit Union. Is Mark Henry here? Yes. yes. Okay. Come to the table, Mark. <laughs> we have Danny Casella, President of ATU, 726 of Staten Island. We have Mark Henry, president of ATU 1056 in Queens. I'm especially happy Danny and Mark are with us today. It is clearly demonstrates tremendous solidarity we enjoy among our organizations, Local 100 and Local 726 and Local 1056. Thank you. We also have our lawyers here. We have Vito Pitta. Arthur Schwartz, I think he's here. No, he's probably late. 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 <laughs> and of course, Dennis Engel, our general counsel. And seated behind me is our elected executive board, representing workers from all divisions, as well as our elected chairs of all 14 divisions covered by the MTA. You will notice some new faces on our side of the table. And I'm here to tell you that they may be new to this process, but I can assure you that what they may lack in experience, they more than make up for the determination to do the right thing by the members who elected them. One of the faces that is not new would be mine. I have been part of this negotiation process in every TW contract since 1982. First as a division officer, where I concentrated on departmental issues and for the past two contracts as part of main table bargaining team. In a little while, 
we will be presenting to you a comprehensive set of proposals. They cover a wide range of economic demands and general conditions of employment. This document was not just thrown together, quite the opposite. This package is a result of three month process. During this process, the entire membership had the opportunity to present individual proposals at division meetings, either in person or through their section or division officers. These pro proposals were compiled and presented to the TW Local 100 Policy Committee. The committee went through them one by one and ultimately presented a refined package to the Local 100 Executive Board for action. I would like to add that our Executive Board unanimously adopted this package. This is a powerful indication that the entire leadership and membership are solid, solidly behind this effort. I will also tell you what this document is not. It is not a laundry list of gimme gimme demands. Yes, our members want to be rewarded for their hard work and sacrifices, but they also care about delivering the best possible service to the riding public. They care about on-time service, they believe in teamwork, they want to get the job done right. So what are our expectations on this side of the table? Before I answer my own question, I would like to say that this membership, your workforce, delivers New York City's most essential service. The city cannot function without our bus and subway system. We in transit are what makes New York and the economic giant of the world greatest center of art, culture, finance, technology, and tourism. This workforce is trained and dedicated. We are on the job 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year. There is no downtime. The pressure to produce is intense. We work through snowstorm, hurricanes, freezing temperature, brutal heat, while the rest of the city hunkers down. Our members are out there keeping service moving, protecting the equipment, and assisting the public. Our workforce has done a remarkable job implementing the subway action plan. Management recently reported on major improvements on on-time performance. These improvements would not and could not have happened without this workforce. The big turnaround in service reliability is a direct result of the hard work and dedication of transit workers. Transit workers are the most productive labor force in the city or state, but remarkably, we are also the most underappreciated workforce in the city or state. We are the targets of assaults on a daily basis, both physically and verbally. The intimidation factor can be overwhelming. The MTA logo on our vests or on our uniforms acts as a bullseye for many passengers who are angry at delays or just angry at life. Recent outrages, assaults on our conductors are symptoms of an unacceptable situation that is only getting worse. As reported in the news, these conductors were punched, spit on, cursed at, and hit with a thrown bottle. They are just a small sample size of scores of these incidents inflicted on transit workers seemingly every day. No other workforce in New York has to put up with this level of abuse, threats, and bullying. Then there are the many life-threatening dangers transit workers face on the job. Since we last met for contract negotiations, three transit workers killed on the job in a hor horrible accident. Only one worker recently lost his life, another lost an arm. Hundreds more are injured in all sorts of mishaps due to the hazardous conditions we face across the systems on the tracks and in our depots and barns and while operating on the road. On top of all these dangers and hardships, our members have to deal with another nerve-wracking situation, that being the ridiculous and unnecessary amount of discipline for often trivial violations across every title. This need, needlessly adds to the tension levels to, a, to an already success, stressful workday. This situation must be fixed. Our members expect a fair and equitable agreement. 
We have worked hard for it. We deserve it. What is fair? We deserve it. What is fair? I'm talking about a contract that keeps us ahead of inflation, keeps us safe on the job, protects our health and health benefits, and addresses numerous departmental concerns. Quite frankly, everyone on this side of the table will settle for nothing less. That's right. So, what do we expect from you, the MTA? Before I address that, let me first applaud our state legislators for settling our long-term capital construction funding needs. Conviction pricing, the internet retail sales tax, and the real estate tax on mansion sales means billions of new dollars for the capital plan. This plus the new money stream from increased fares on the TBTA tolls puts the MTA in a far better financial situation. I am also happy that the governor has finally appointed a new MTA chair, and congratulations to him. Your full leadership team is now in place and your financial picture is strong. There is no need to be nickel and dime in us, and there is certainly no reason for your side of the table demanding givebacks of any kind. The MTA has the ability to pay for a fair and equitable contract for transit workers. We expect your management team to negotiate in good faith with the goal of setting a new agreement by the expiration date of our current agreement. That is our goal. We are willing to negotiate weekdays, weekends, weeknights That's right. to get it done. That's right. What we in TW Local 100 win for our members is not only good for us, but is also good for every worker in, at the MTA. A raising tide for TW lifts all MTA boats. Thank you for your attention, for your attention, and I now will give you our demands. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. So just. Thank you.